Okay, hey everybody, welcome to Chew Stream. Today I, I'm a little bit under the weather, so please excuse my voice today. It's not the best. But you know what? You know what that means. All the hardcore Chew Streamers knows what that means. It just means if you stay positive, great things are going to happen. And I'm excited. You know, when I got this uh, cold yesterday, I was excited because there's a few things that could turn out to be really, really awesome coming up. One of them is, um, you know, I'm going to be talking with a couple very, very, like, superstar level um, industry artists, painters uh, tonight, which is going to be so exciting. I hope things go well you know just gonna try my best and if things don't go well what does that mean it just means even better things are gonna happen all right and we just gotta stick with that even if it's not true uh, it will become true just because that's what we believe you know so welcome to the true stream for those of you that are first you know first time uh, streamers you can tell I uh, my arm is hurting as well and it's just like Man, everything is going wrong. But if you stay positive, right? If you're trying super hard and you're staying super positive, then that just means great things are going to happen. And I I live by that. You know, it's it's so true in so many ways. Okay. So, um <clears throat> you know, as an artist, a lot of times we feel kind of alone. This is kind of like a, a road that we can only travel on, um, you know, learning the things that we need to learn to become a great artist, to have a great career, to work on great projects, things like that. So part of the stream is just, you know, once a week we get together and we can see we're not alone. You know, there's tons of us out there, tons of us in the struggle, and we are on the right path. You know, so... I like to start off the streams by doing a little bit of a roll call, right? A little roll call of who's out there, where are you from? Let me give you a couple shout outs, okay? So, of course, I see Alan on there from uh, Mexico. What's up? Shren from uh, Singapore, right on. We're going to be going to Singapore end of June. So look out, Asia. Bobby and Kay are coming to Singapore. It's going to be awesome. Who knows? Maybe even Taiwan. Who knows? Austria, Denmark, Alberta, Los Angeles, Poland, uh, Pittsburgh, Slovakia, Australia, Russia, Scotland, Italy. Holy smokes. You see what I mean? There's tons of us out there. Ottawa, Italy again, Portugal, Saskatchewan, UK, France. And you know what? The best thing of all is that you guys are all pretty much like going down the same path that I went down. You know, thinking about these things, hopefully, uh, you know, if you adopt these things, then this is the path that I went down where I really just, and I still very much believe if you are trying super hard, if you're constantly adding value to your craft and if you believe that when bad things happen when you're trying super hard and you have a positive attitude great things are on their way really as as simple as it sounds that's it you keep using your best judgment keep rethinking things um, that is what's going to bring us to all those dream jobs that you you know only dreamed of I know like a lot of things that I've worked on honestly even though I you know I started the studio nine years ago I'm still I still feel very much like a little fanboy like this is not real you know and and then it comes out on screen or it comes out in the game and things like that or in a book or whatever it's just like wow you know that's what hard work will get you. You know, a lot of people, um, 
We want to live a comfortable life. We want our family to be comfortable as well. We don't want them to be in danger or have a hard life, especially, you know, kids, things like that. But the thing is, is that the true road to comfort is usually and ironically from taking on many challenges first to put yourself in the deep end. It's to struggle first, to have a great relaxing life later on. You need to go through that struggle. You need to go through that struggle to truly appreciate and I feel to show life that you deserve those things. You need to go through that struggle. It's kind of like um, all of life is that way from which birds will survive, which, you know, seals will survive. Is it the one laying on the rocks all day? Is it the one trying to just have a relaxing kind of life from the beginning? No, of course not. And I'm sure we all know lots of examples of very well off people that we know. Maybe they have really, um, you know, really successful parents and things like that. That could be a handicap in itself. If you're in one of those situations, you got to be careful. You got, because you got nothing to struggle against. You don't have a big reason to struggle against, right? All you have is, you know, just, all you have is if you want to do something, then you're going to go and do it. You don't really feel like you absolutely have to to ensure the survival of your family. You know, and, and a lot of times that is such a powerful thing that can really help you uh, along your way. It's kind of like fire. You know, you don't want too much fire, but if you don't have any fire, it's hard to uh, survive. Let's see what we shall make this guy, maybe I'll give him a bill. Um, <clears throat> so this is how it's going to work for questions. You can post them here, bit.do slash stream hyphen April 24, okay? And if you post the hashtag ChewStream and a link to this broadcast on your Facebook or Twitter, uh, I'll pick someone to give this drawing to. Okay? Um, the more people that share it, the better. Because if we unite, you know, as artists even more, well, the world is not going to live without art. It's only going to help us as as a whole unit you know to be educated to know what's going on to know the pitfalls and all that kind of stuff <clears throat> now um, last week I was reading you know I, I mentioned about a contest where it's just for fun right it's just for fun hosted by Autodesk Sketchbook Pro uh, to help support like or to help support schoolism has offered to uh, give free schoolism classes two thousand dollars worth to six individuals to up to six individuals okay um, I believe the age group is under 25 but you can go there if you're under 25 you can go to schoolism.com and find out more details it's right on the front page uh, hopefully some really well deserved uh, young and inspiring uh, artists will be able to take advantage of that. And like I was saying last week, you know, I really got my start from joining contests. As funny as that sounds, uh, joining annuals that pay me nothing. You know, it's different when it's like a company that might come to you and say, uh, we need some work. <clears throat> we can't pay you right now, but if the work is good and the pilot is good, then we can pay you. No, I don't believe in that. That's just a crock of, 
you know, that's totally trying to take advantage. However, if it's more like a contest that will bring a lot of exposure to the final person, it's guaranteed exposure, and guaranteed a certain amount of exposure and a certain amount of uh, exposure to the right people, then I'm totally up for that. You know, there's a lot of things that uh, that I feel I did really differently that really helped me out a lot of times. You know, for example, subway sketching. Subway sketching in Toronto, we started that years ago. It's still running now with uh, Peter Chan. And that was for free. You know, that was for fun. It was for free. But in the end, did it help our studio? Heck yeah, it helped it tons. You know, because great ideas, you know, they spread fast. Um, great free ideas spread like wildfire. So, anyhow, uh, the other thing is, <clears throat> yeah, if you have any questions, you could post them here, okay, on the stream, or on this link, bit.do slash stream hyphen April 24. The other thing I want to mention was painting creatures with Bobby Chu. I opened up that class. Uh, we opened up that class last week, or I guess a few days ago. <coughs> it filled up really fast. We didn't send out a newsletter, so a lot of people didn't um, know. So I apologize about that. But uh, to make up for it, I'm going to open up. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. I'm going to open up a second class on May 1st, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 a.m. Pacific time okay limited spots <coughs> and it's gonna be painting creatures with me where we're gonna be taking one of your ideas and bring it to the end where I'm painting on top of it you know, every every other week and then the weeks between you get assignments to help strengthen your your knowledge of creature design so that's gonna be really fun and uh, get your fingers ready to push on the button because um, apparently you know it's it's doing pretty well so that's something to look forward to <coughs> if you want um, sign up sorry sign up for the schoolism newsletter if you go to bit.do slash schoolism hyphen newsletter you can sign up for the newsletter there and then when we open the class you'll get a news you'll get a uh, a newsletter in your email I'll tell you to uh, sign up okay Excuse me, I'm going to take a little drink of this uh, coffee here. I see people talking about their different subways and, hey, somebody from Serbia, what's up? Uh, different subways around the world, how they're like, and some are too crowded and this and that. Um, the Toronto one gets really crowded, you know, but the thing is, when you sketch in groups, the intimidation factor is gone, you know, because it's no longer one weird person on the subway or two weird people on the subway looking at everybody. It becomes like 10, 20 people on the subway looking at everybody with sketchbooks in their hands and all of a sudden there is no more intimidation. It actually becomes very entertaining for a lot of people and they really, so many people tend to enjoy it. And a lot of times, you know, uh, they'll even join us the next time. That's been really cool. Um, let's go to some questions here. <coughs> <coughs> 
Okay. Lolita asks, uh, can you share your approach on how you come up with good and largely appealing designs in your works? Um, do you just draw what you personally like to see? Or is there some kind of trend formula that you follow? That's a great question. You know, the main thing is that you're always thinking from a high level point of view, the highest level point of view, if you can, and then slowly work your way down. So what that means is, what's the highest level point of view of your art that makes it um, good, right? What is it? Design? What is it? Emotion? Um, in the end, it becomes all about the emotional impact that it has on your viewer. Because you, as an artist, we're communicators, right? We're communicators. So if you communicate something and people don't get it, people don't feel the way that you're asking them to feel from looking at the image, then the image is not <clears throat> successful. That's how I see it. So I start off with the highest level point of view. What is the purpose of this character? What is the purpose of this design? What kind of feelings are we supposed to evoke from this particular design? Is it wonderment? Is it awe-inspiring? Is it funny? You know, and start from there and, and work everything around that end goal. You know, sometimes the design is supposed to be many things. It's supposed to be funny, yet it's supposed to be awe-inspiring at some times. You know, perhaps in the beginning it comes out and it's very awe-inspiring, whatever this thing is. It's just growing in, in this super long shadow that's being casted on the, uh, the discoverers of this creature. And this thing is just kind of standing up from a sitting position. So it's just getting taller and taller and taller. Epic, epic, awe-inspiring. And then it turns around and it has a funny nose or something. It's supposed to be funny. And then the quirky uh, expression comes comes out and so on and so forth. That kind of, uh, that's like one example, you know, of how I think about uh, appealing designs. Then there's a whole entire aspect of, um, there are general shapes, lines, lighting that evoke certain emotions that you, that give off certain kind of feelings, right? So for example, round. Round is definitely more fun, more cute. Angular tends to be a lot more scary, uh, cool, dynamic. Symmetrical feels a lot more formal, right? A lot more stylized. <clears throat> Um, different things like this there's a whole bunch of them and you know I'm not gonna go through them all uh, but if you're interested in that kind of stuff then I would highly recommend my uh, digital painting or my painting creatures class that's opening on next Thursday okay let's see what else we got here <clears throat> Gabriella how do you go about separating your work from your emotional turmoil in life? <laughs> Sometimes I struggle to do my art when I'm feeling down because of something that happened in my... Yeah, I feel you. I definitely feel you. And that's definitely something that's a little more difficult to do. Um, sometimes things just, you know, ruin the whole entire day. But uh, what ends up happening with me anyways is that I kind of, I'll feel bad for a little bit. I got to go through that, I guess. You know, and, and then I got to, then I kind of switch, uh, switch and just are like, okay, you got to try to get positive now. You know, because that's what it's all about. It's all about being positive and thankful and, you know, all these good positive vibes. So when I really feel bad, what I do is, it's kind of funny, I just, 
I tell myself why I appreciate myself you know from the point of view of that person that I am just so frustrated with so frustrated with and uh, as silly as it sounds it totally works you know it just makes you feel a little better uh, for example um, you know if I was talking with you guys and telling you guys why I appreciate you guys so much it might go something like this you out there that's drawing while listening to me talk and watching me draw uh, you know you out there that's struggling through your career but really trying your hardest you know, let me tell you something I, I really genuinely appreciate you guys um, because you push me you really do and you affect me I'm sick today I feel horrible but I'm here for you guys because you guys are here for me and one of my biggest goals in life is to try to help people as much as I can and affect the art community in a positive way if it was just me this wouldn't happen it's because of you that's listening that's helping me through this and it's not easy to be you it's not easy to go through all the things that you go through and still be there still be strong still be positive still doing your thing and I'll tell you just like the great Chinese bamboo you know you might try super hard I think it's like five years it just stays in the ground right you're trying super hard you're laying down the foundation you're molding your your mind yourself your, your you as a person into an ultimate super artist super person laying down great foundation and once that bamboo sprouts you know, those Chinese bamboos will shoot up like 20 feet in a year after not showing a single sign of life you know above ground that's what happens when you create a great foundation it's not easy so you know give yourself a pat on the back because what you're doing is what I did you know, and that's how I created my career. That's how I continue to create my career. So good for you guys. Right on. And it doesn't matter all the bad things that happen to you. It's a test. It's meant to be. It's meant to make you stronger. So, you know, just don't give up and you will become stronger. If it's somebody that you, you know, that really puts you down all the time maybe that's the problem then I would say it in terms of like through their eyes you know I, I know I constantly put you down I know I constantly show you even though I, I don't say it I show you that I don't really believe in you and I'm worried about you I'm sorry you know it's just because I care about you I want you to have a good life you know I would literally say these things and it, it you know what it makes me feel better it does um, <clears throat> the other thing that I do is just I'll think you know I'll feel bad and then I'll think to myself well what does this mean what kind of test is happening here what kind of great things are around the corner and pick myself back up you know but um, yeah that was a good question weird answer I'm sure but uh, it works for me anyways um, do you approach a piece differently when you go digital versus traditional yes uh, that's from Paul Forrest what's up Paul um, Paul won one of my drawings so uh, yeah when I go traditional <laughs> I skip a lot more steps I combine steps you know because when you're going traditional it's like you're able to um, do a lot more complex lines a lot more complex subtle descriptions um, 
<clears throat> than you can digitally. Digitally, sometimes it feels like you're painting with your left hand. So you have to simplify a lot of your brush strokes, a lot of your details. Uh, for me, anyways, um, that's what I found. So digital, it's a lot less planning as well because everything is so easily changeable. Um, traditional, a lot more planning, less steps. for my sniffles here. Uh, what would you say is the most important thought in the mind of a successful person? Uh, I think the most important thing would be, for me, is it's to have a mission. You know, to have a mission that you are really passionate about. Uh, a goal that you're really passionate about to the point where perhaps it's a mission, right? Like my mission is to change the art community for the better. You know, to take on the challenges of being an artist, especially an artist uh, that might be a little further away. And how can we help these people to give them the same kind of uh, chances that people in, you know, in the major cities have, like New York or California or things like that? How do we do that? You know, that's a huge mission of mine. And just to, um, you know, bring that good education all over the world. Not, actually not good level education, but the best level of education. And more and more, I'm able to do that. Like last uh, couple weeks ago, we had art director Robert Kondo come in. He's like so, so respected in the industry, a giant in the industry. And uh, with the help of Seneca College, you know, we were able to host a free workshop with him in Toronto, which was amazing, wonderful. <clears throat> I hope to do more of those kind of things. Um, but through that thought, Okay. Through that thought of having that mission, uh, it helps drive me to do all sorts of things, especially things that I might not want to do. I just think, you know what, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Because you know, my goal is to change the world in a positive way. Then heck yeah, it's worth it. If I have to suffer a little bit of punishment, if I don't want to get up, like today I didn't want to get up, but I just do anyways. Uh, is it worth it? Yeah, because I'm not just drawing for a television show. I'm not just drawing for even a blockbuster movie. I'm drawing to inspire people so that so that they would be willing to perhaps um, hear the things that I've learned, the things that I felt have helped me. You know, so it doesn't it doesn't be it become about the uh, the movie as much anymore. Um, I'm trying to get into art school, and I have an interview tomorrow. I I know we have to show them a lot of drawings and show our motivation. But do you have any advice, <laughs> Marion? Uh, you know, first you go in there and you tell them why you like their school so much. And then you don't really uh, go on about that over and over again. So you start off with a nice compliment. I would, I would anyways. <clears throat> and then you know not really bring it up because you don't want to just be nonstop compliments uh, the whole entire time. It gets kind of distracting. Um, <clears throat> then I would tell them what I want to do. Like I want to go to your school because. And then you tell them why it would matter to them. You know, you say all your things up front, so perhaps you didn't have the same education as somebody else or whatever. Um, you have some big, big disadvantages. Then say that up front. 
and tell them why it, that's not a disadvantage. You know, even though I haven't actually taken life drawing before, uh, because you know I can't afford it right now, it's actually made me even more hungry about art and learning. And I feel like even though I might not be the strongest artist, I will definitely be one of the hard most hardworking. You know, and I have common sense. I know I'll do well if given a chance uh, with your school. And I think that's what you're looking for, right? You're looking for uh, good artists with good personalities that will represent your school well. You know, is it better to have a great student come in that just maintains their greatness? Or is it better to have uh, maybe a newer artists come in, not that season, not that experience, but leave your school completely transformed. I feel like that's the person I'm going to be, if given the chance. You know, something like that. Um, Monica, <coughs> what are the what are good traits of a great email that gets you interested in the person? I was talking about an email last week that this person wrote in saying that they have no experience in the animation industry. They have no education. They have, you know, really not too much to, to go with. And I brought it up as an example of what an awesome email is. And actually, as a little update, this person that never went to college and never had much experience, maybe can't even draw, because the person said they don't even have a, a portfolio ready yet. Well, yeah, I'm going to meet with that person on Friday, because it doesn't take uh, a great school, it doesn't take a great portfolio <clears throat> to get your foot in the door sometimes. Sometimes it just takes uh, expressing yourself in the best way possible to get that, just that toe in the door. Okay. <coughs> I'm very sorry about the coughs. Um, let's go to some more questions here. Okay, Olivia writes, uh, I always get all this pressure to go to a proper school at CalArts. I re recently graduated with my anim <coughs> with your AA degree. Is it possible for me to Frankenstein the rest of my education together and still achieve my goals to eventually work at a studio and make it on my own? Yeah, I would say even more because Frankensteining your education together, that shows initiative. That shows so much more passion than just enrolling in a great school and you just, that's all you did. Because everybody that graduates with you, they're exactly the same as you. In the exact same, you know, situation as you, for the most part, looking for a job. And you guys are all starting off at the exact same time. People that constantly add to their education, those are the winners in the end. Most of college is just to prep you to start in the industry, perhaps. The ones, the education that will take your level of art to that next level, to make you a force in the industry, that's something they have to search out. A lot of people will search that out by just working hard and then they get maybe a really good supervisor that helps to train them. Way more people just keep learning. It's such a shame because it, you know, I should really do a survey one day, but from my own observation, from my own experience, it seems like the average is like four years in, <coughs> in the industry doing well. Like most of the people will stop learning. Like eighty percent of the people will stop learning and get comfortable. 
you know, they need they need to look out because even though they're doing well now because of what they know and everything, the world keeps changing. Cartoons, art changes even quicker. Movies, gaming changes even quicker, right? Games 10 years ago, are they different than they are now? Yeah, completely. So don't get yourself set up for failure. That's exactly what's going to happen if you stop learning. Now, if you stop, if you continue to practice, that helps, that's pretty good. But if you really want to get ahead instead of maintain, then I say uh, learn. Actively go out there and learn. Take a class, do a DVD, you know, read a book and practice everything in that book. <laughs> because in those situations, what happens is you're still practicing, but you're practicing as a result of learning. That's powerful. That's so powerful, especially if you're at a point in your career where you're doing well. If people know you're constantly improving yourself and you're like one of the top uh, artists in the studio, what do you think they'll want to do with you? Do you think they'll want to ever get rid of you? Or you think that, you know, they're going to want to give you more responsibility? Those are definitely the people I would want to give more responsibility to as an owner of a studio. It's definitely not the people that go, okay, what should I do now? Okay, what should I do now? I'm done this, what should I do now? Even though they're doing everything on time and, and such, it's not, uh, you know, it's not gonna be as helpful in the long run. There's gonna be problems in the long run. So I constantly tell everybody, you know, like, you gotta keep learning. I try to encourage everybody at the studio to keep taking classes, keep learning something. Right, that's how, um, that's how to have a nice long career and a successful career. Struggling when you're starting off is much better than struggling when you're, you know, later on in life. Um, but, you know, I want to go back to Louis' question about uh, what you say is the most important thought in a person, in a successful person's uh, mind. I think they all have some sort of purpose, right? They all have a purpose that is so strong with them, so incredibly rock solid strong, especially for people that want to get their own ideas off the ground. It has to take a such a solid, uh, you know, goal-oriented personality to get it through. Because a lot of times it's because that person believes so much that that person convinces others that it'll work, and that's the only reason it does work. A lot of times, you know, when you have a purpose, you have to stand by it. Something special happens when you show an undying drive to achieve a goal. An undying drive. And that's what I'm trying to, you know, uh, set as an example to the newcomers of art and entertainment art and stuff like that. Is to show, you know, these things, I don't need to do them. You know, I don't need to draw this drawing. I got work to do. But I'm doing them because I have a purpose. Anyways, really, really um, appreciate that question there. <clears throat> um, something that I want to mention. You know, I was talking about subway sketching. And I was thinking to myself, you know what, though? I didn't uh, start doing subway sketching because I thought it was a great way to market our studio. You know, I didn't uh, do it because I thought 
oh, I bet you all these people in all these different countries and cities around the world would start up their own subway sketch group and call it, you know, the Bobby Chu Istanbul subway sketch group, things like that, because that's what happened, uh, you know, way back then. And then we started getting calls all over the place. But something that I learned from that is that <coughs> you gotta always look carefully. You gotta always look carefully for your options and what can you do. A lot of times, you know, as younger artists or just young young people, we tend to think a lot more like this is my choice. I could either do A or B and that's it. If I don't get B, then my life is over, you know, and put so much emphasis on one kind of uh, scenario, one kind of result. But the thing is, you'll become a lot more successful and life becomes so much better when you discover all of your options. So look carefully. You know, the best options are usually hidden like subway sketching. Anybody can get together and go and sketch. It doesn't have to be on a subway. Anybody can do that. Uh, subway sketching never became big until we went like probably a whole entire year, every Sunday, just continuously, and continuously plug in the group on different forums, showing our sketches, and just kept at it. If we stopped, we never would have seen any of those options, any of those possibilities happening. Carlin Tam uh, asks, uh, how do you go about learning new things to incorporate into your artwork? There's a good sense of balance between learning and practicing to keep ourselves relevant. <clears throat> uh, Carlin, I think you just learn as much as you can. Whatever you can take on keep learning you know as long as you can keep doing your the things that you're responsible for then do as much learning as you can because <clears throat> that's what's going to take you to that next level doing your work only helps you to maintain the level that you got right now of course doing your work well will also elevate your game but learning new things, constantly learning, that's like the shortcut. That's like people that used to play the old school Super Mario Brothers. That's like the pipe to level eight. You know, you go through this secret pipe and then all of a sudden you jump a whole bunch of levels through learning. Um, what do you learn? Learn about life. Learn about how we see things. Learn about how other people see things. When you start tapping into that, all of a sudden the possibilities, it's endless because there's always going to be new people. There's always going to be new people to learn from. Right, people will keep discovering new things. You'll discover new things. I'm sure there's a bunch of people out there trying to, you know, they're drawing with a ballpoint pen because they're watching this. Because they're trying to understand, they're trying to learn, um, you know, how I do it. <clears throat> okay. You know, one thing that has really unleashed just this nonstop belief in myself and what what I'm doing is just uh it's from working out, you know, not just working out doing, you know, working out my body, but working out your mind. Once I, you know, learned to think in a completely new way and got really strong at it, really good at it, perhaps it's light and shadow, you know, I didn't really understand light and shadow too much. I didn't really understand design too much in the very beginning. Um, but once I learned that I can shape my mind and get parts of it stronger and stronger, then all of a sudden 
there's such belief that happens within you because you know you have all the right parts you have all the the right equipment you know to get to that level where all of a sudden you're painting creatures completely realistic photo real levels if you like you know things like that um, <coughs> let's see if there's any other <coughs> comments excuse me yeah, I see Peter Chan on there hey Peter Peter's the one that's heading up our uh, subway sketching now, and he's also an amazing artist, amazing teacher. So if you ever have the chance to learn from him, uh, pay attention. <laughs> okay, so... <coughs> Excuse me, we're almost out of time here, but if you want a chance to win this uh, drawing here, all you need to do, all you all you need to do is, uh, you know, you could go to this this URL right here, bit.do/slash/chewstream-april24, and uh, share. Hey, I see Danny on there. What's up, Danny? Good to see you. So all these, you know, that's I was saying this last time. This is really the reason why I do all of this stuff draw and paint this is the number one reason why I do this stuff is because not because of the great projects not because I necessarily like to travel even though I really do but because of all the opportunities and all the friendships all these opportunities to meet all these wonderful people literally around the world and that's the best thing you know about doing the things that I do uh, or the projects that we work on it's all about the friendships you know in the end that's that's what you got you got the friendships those pieces of art that you did they don't they don't hang out with you you know they don't uh, keep you company <coughs> So let's go. Let's see if there's any other uh, questions. Yeah, if you have any other questions, you can post them on the link there. I'll try to answer a couple more. Any info on the workshop in Singapore? It's called, let me try it and find. Um, try to find that email hopefully I can okay here it is let me see if I can find an email on here or a website it's called start st art um, it's a little hard to It's a little hard to find on the internet. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not quite sure at this time. Um, but when I do, uh, when I do know, I'll be posting it, you know, everywhere. And and most importantly, I'll be sending out a newsletter. So make sure that you're on the newsletter. That's the best way to uh, keep in touch, okay? Yeah, right on. Waikit from Malaysia, he's gonna be going to Singapore. It'll be great to uh, hang out, meet up. Um, <clears throat> okay, let me see what else do I wanna do to this guy. I think I wanna just, just work on the overall tone of it a little bit more. before I give this away to somebody out there, you know. Okay, so somebody was asking, um, 
This is funny because somebody was asking, let me see where the heck that was. Something about comic books. Oh, I totally missed it. Okay, well, let me try to refresh this again. A bunch of the, the new questions got erased. Okay, if you go to start event dot sg, that's the event I'm going to uh, in Singapore. Okay, start event dot sg, and it's going to happen end of June. Um, now somebody had a question about comic books, but I can't really find it right now. I'm sorry about that. Um, you know, have I ever made my own ideas into a comic book. Well, yeah, like I collaborated with some artists, uh, my old college roommates actually, to create a comic book called Nico and the Sword of Light. It's an animated comic book, so it's very different. Every panel is fully animated. Uh, so hopefully you could check that out. <coughs> okay, I think, I think we're very close to finishing seven minutes left. So if you have any other questions or if you want a chance to win this drawing, I'm going to be drawing a random person to give this, uh, this sketch to. Okay. And it's going to be either, I'm going to either choose from Twitter or Facebook. So if you want maximum um, chance to win, I guess post it on both. Uh, for those of you that came in a little late, you know, we'll be doing this again next week. And the week after, and the week after that. You know, it's just a reminder to get together, do some drawing for yourself, talk about art and uh, get our priorities straight, right? You know, some people, they've asked me before, like, if you're telling all your secrets, if you're telling all this stuff to anybody who's willing to listen, isn't that kind of a dumb move? You know, isn't that creating competition for yourself? That would be if I didn't, you know, if I stopped learning. Right? If I didn't follow my own words, and I just stopped learning all of a sudden, then yeah, that might just be. But I keep learning. So I'll continuously share the things I've learned. Why not? <laughs> and the other thing is, you know, most people, it's funny because you know, I'll meet some people, they'll ask me, oh, some advice, right? Perhaps they've been struggling, this and that. And then I'll tell them the same things I'm telling you guys on these streams. This is what worked for me. This is what didn't work for me. This is why. These are the things that really work for me, and this is why. And all that good stuff. And then the person would be like, yeah, I know that. You know, and it just goes to show that doesn't matter if I, you know, say all this stuff to whoever wants to listen. What I'm saying is only for really the special few that are kind of like me, you know, really, really passionate about art, really looking to improve their their selves, their art career, their lives, and uh, have an open mind. You know, so even if I tell everybody, it's still not going to change everybody. And most likely only change the selected few that are super hardcore. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so four minutes left. Just about done this, uh, this 
weird little duck 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 dog but what makes you different makes you special right so okay here we go um, let's let's pick somebody so today I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Facebook <coughs> check out one of the shares there oh actually it's time for we could just do one more um, one more question here you're talking about learning and progressing how do you measure your own progress and ensure that you're moving in the right direction you constantly look up and you constantly kind of try to look at what you're doing from a third person point of view you know and try to see where things are going it's it's a skill that you have to uh, practice um, do you notice your own improvement instantly or do you surprise yourself after a while of practicing with little results? I don't really, you know what, I don't really look for the results too much. I just concentrate on how much I'm trying and what are the things I'm trying to do? Like, what am I trying to improve at? Is that logical? Is that something that's going to help me, um, help my career? add value to my art, those kind of things. <laughs> so I don't really look for the results. Instead, um, so to answer your question, I don't notice. And then instead, it's like months later, I look back and I'm like, wow, yeah, things have changed. I really understand that. I can really do that well now, and so on and so forth. Let it be about the process, not about the result. Let it be about your routine. Let it be about your effort. Not whether or not you got hired. Not whether or not uh, people are noticing you at work and you know, promoting you. Don't focus on those things. Keep focusing on learning. Learning more and more and more and getting really good at those things. Practice through learning to get really good at those things. If they are not noticing you now, eventually you're going to learn so many things and get so good at so many things, the world has no choice but to pay attention. That's how it works. And the more struggle that you have to go through before somebody discovers you, if you stay positive, the more beneficial it will become when people really do discover you the bigger the impact you know it's like seeing one of those artists that just came out of nowhere all of a sudden you're looking at their portfolio and just go wow never seen this artist before right those are the things that get shared way more so don't worry you know keep learning <coughs> And of course, you know, that's why I built schoolism.com. So if you guys are interested in learning from the best, that's the best way to get to the top. As far as I'm concerned, you know, a lot of people ask, what do you do? You go to school. A lot of people are saying, don't go to school, this and that. Uh, some people are saying, go to school. I, for one, I kind of look at it as if you are very disciplined, you don't need school. If you're not very disciplined, and you know, if you need a push, if you need somebody to keep you on track, then I would definitely recommend school. But school can be very expensive. You know, and you have to think about it as an investment. So if you are going to spend $70,000 throughout those three, four years of school, if you're going to spend $100,000, $150,000, is that the best way for you to learn? Is that the best way for you to have to spend that money uh, and get a good return? These are the things that we have to think about. So anyways, 
Um, looks like our time's pretty much up here. <clears throat> Let's go to the shares. Okay. Okay, and then I'm just going to select somebody. Yvonne Goodman, <laughs> right on. I've known Yvonne for years now. And, uh, you know, it's great to see that I stumbled on your name. And you're getting a drawing from me. Right on, Yvonne. Right on to everybody that showed up and did some drawing and, you know, and. and continuously learn continuously pass on the good vibes and keep you know keep on keeping on in the the struggle of things I'm there with you okay so there we go nice little drawing for Yvonne Goodman out in California <coughs> okay so Yvonne what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna contact you through Facebook and ask for your mailing address okay so look out for it and uh thank you everybody that you know showed up today and to hang out with me i really really appreciate that we're going to be doing this again next thursday and uh keep on keeping on keep on spreading those positive vibes all right take care everybody have a great day